Peasant Productions presents the Math of ESP, why it works even if you don't believe in it. Um, oh, I'm getting tired and old and fudgy. It's the day after April Fool's and nobody even had a decent April Fool's joke prank anywhere that I could see. So, yeah, such is life. Alright, um, International Space Station, like I said, used an awful lot of concepts of what I use in the math of ESP. I needed a miracle, which is, you know, somewhere down the line I've got to be able to try and step back into a position of being in control of an object. But between that time and the time that I put it together, I would be out of control of it, but I needed enough things covered that, you know, when it came time, it would be ready. I guess is the only way to put it. So, um, like I said, the idea of having an international, so the environment is maintained in peace. Um, nobody trusts the other governments involved, so nobody puts guns and bombs and stuff up there. Um, people put, if you get an international, people put a little more energy into, into it just simply because one side or the other will try and pick up slack when they can. So, I kind of have all the things here. I got the miracle I needed to put together. I got the energy. I got the motion. I got the faith in what I was doing. Remember, I created this whole thing off of a single letter. A one-page letter written specifically for the government to steal from me. I set everything up right on the letter to steal. I gave it to them in a package deal to where they would steal it. I had to explain enough quick enough, fast enough, simple enough to get them to jump on it and without thinking of what would happen when they started an international situation um, it would get out of hand long before they could control it. <clears throat> it has done so and in order to give you an understanding of how this kind of philosophy works in other ways um, like I said I get people in space, I'll put you to work. Um, easiest, thing, easiest thing to stop and think about. Solar panels are extremely lightweight for the amount of produ productive power they produce and the consistency of them being there, being reliable, being easy to replace, um, being fairly efficient at what they're doing and out in space if I want to put a hundred square miles of solar panel up who's gonna, who's gonna stop me? What's gonna stop me? What am I gonna be in the way of? It's, a hundred, it's what, 125,000, 225,000 miles just to the moon? A hundred miles of that ain't gonna be a blink if I were to put it inside the moon's orbit which wouldn't make sense because why bother? Put it outside the orbit, <coughs> put it on a Lagrange point if you want to with, with, with the Earth, you know, so that you're relative to the Earth and Moon all the time, but put it up where you're never having really to worry about anybody eclipsing you. And you got power all you want. Build a factory. Smelt metal with electrics instead of with fucking coal. You don't need coal. You need, you need the heat. You don't think I can make enough laser beams and, and, and whatever else I want to? Keep in mind also, folks, that I believe in the 1970s when they were first analyzing the moon, they said there was an awful lot of the compounds up there on the moon itself that it would be very, very easy to produce aluminum. Now, I'm not really in favor of aluminum in a lot of cases, but if you need structural support, and you don't need a lot of weight or mass, aluminum is definitely by, by far very cheap and easy to put together and you know if you're up there smelting aluminum and putting all that together and you're building sheets and you're building girders and whatever you want to build right I mean it doesn't make any difference you got all kinds of landscape to work on, you got all kinds of airspace to work on you can have you know, 
100, 100 square foot big factories. Think about it. The factory it can be, itself can be two or three hundred you know, square miles of stuff to work with. You can take asteroids in and tear, you can tear them down into the basic materials and turn them into something else. And you see the problem with this is that the United States, which is fascism now, can't accept is that if you bring an asteroid in and you're in a place where it's extremely mineral hungry, whether it's minerals to use for organic farming or it's minerals to use for building electronics or it's minerals to use for building spaceships like Elon Musk wants to build or my whole cities around the terminus of the uh, the moon, um, you know, it, it's it's relatively simply that you've got all these people that are going to barter with you because they're going to have something to give you. So you have created income. You have created money. You have created barter. Yes, it goes all the way back to the barter system, folks. You have been bartering for what you want all of your life. You have only one monetary system. It is the capitalist system. You have product A, you try and sell it for enough so that you can not only buy product A again, but you can also buy, you know, another vendor's product B. A loaf of bread is pretty dry. A loaf of bread and mayonnaise is better. A loaf of bread... You know, some cheese and tomatoes and lettuce and by golly, you got the workings of the beginnings of a salad there and a sandwich and who knows what all. And that's what I'm offering about getting up there into space, folks. It's not a closed-in system. It's not a system where one person is always going to be right or everybody's going to have all the same answers or agree on everything. It's definitely going to be enough stuff out there going in enough different places and enough different things you can do that, uh, yeah, it, it was 100% viable in the 1970s, folks. I guarantee you with modern, modern stuff that you have, it's even more viable. And <coughs> you take a look at what you have for a planet and what's happening on your planet what you've done to all, with all the pollution everywhere and you have no place to go with your pollution keep in mind I also offer the ability to start collecting up those barrels of, of radioactive material and shipping them off the planet and getting rid of them and, and it, it's extremely non-hazardous to anybody's health routine so yeah you, you folks really need to stop and think because you haven't really done so, you stop and listen to the mindset of a controlling masses for a very long time. You think that being illogical, you think that being insultive, you think calling people names and beating up on them until they accept your way of doing things is, is proper behavior. You think lying and cheating and stealing is proper. You think that it only matters about whether or not you're telling a, a lie, a false statement, only matters if, if it might hurt you. Doesn't matter who else it hurts. So, um, you take that thought, you take those ideas, you look at the possibilities of what I could actually create up there in space that I know how to do. And like I said, I've got the whole industry there. The whole financial system is built in because it's an automatic given that when you have oxygen to sell and people need oxygen, then, you know, they're going to trade you some water for it. They're going to trade you some greens. They're going to trade you some chicken eggs. Yeah. By golly, gimbos, you can survive out there. That's what, that's what the whole planet Earth started on. So, yeah. <clears throat> but, on the other hand, you've got a very limited time because you have such a toxic soup of pollutants on your planet now, whether it's on the land, it's in the waterways, and the oceans, and the seas, and the lakes, 
or the rain or the snow you've polluted absolutely everything so you don't have much of anything to work with and you certainly don't have much time either so that's why I say you, you, you stop and think about this math of ESP and you think about how I talk about you using the whole thing and how extremely simple it all is and you start realizing that if I've been applying this in 35, 40 years down the line when it's an absolute necessity that there be some way to get off of this planet here I am one lone little guy somehow I have managed to finagle a situation that it is actually possible that I, might, I may not get very far beyond, beyond the International Space Station but I might get my wish and not have to die on a planet of stupid humans be someplace else, do something else, be, be, you know, I mean, if people are running around screaming about who, who stole whose memes and who stole whose emails and all of this kind of stuff, you're mad, you're mad at whistleblowers for pointing out that you're breaking the rules. So you get rid of the whistleblowers. And then you complain about the people that are breaking the rules. Yeah. You sound, you sound like two, actually two old, you know, older teenage women, I guess would be the way to put it. Um, cat fighting as to which one of them is prettier because neither one of them wants to admit that either one of them is or isn't as good as they think they are. You know, yeah, you, you, you people just don't, you don't make any sense. So, yeah, I'm probably running on too long for this to be publishable. And, and, and keep in mind, I'm sorry, I gotta throw this in really fast on the end of this guy. I have a minute or so here. Um, keep in mind that if I got up there on the space station and I started getting this the whole huge ball of wax going, thousands upon thousands upon thousands of people in every country got their butt in gear to try and do something. Um, the probability and the possibility that while not every solution is there, the idea of being able to import food back down to the planet is very high. Um, the probability of being able to capture, say, a, a comet and take it, you know, turn it, turn it into a bottle of water and ship it back down to Earth because theirs is all radiated and, and, and deadly. Anyways, they got to have fresh water coming in from somewhere, so you bring a you bring a comet in. Um, <coughs> you've got all kinds of asteroids to use for material to, for growing medium. You can build as much greenhouse space as you want in space. There's there's like like the solar panels. There's no limit. Just you know, make a bunch of them so they're containable and controllable, and you have your tropic and you have your you know, your, your farmland for, for grass and wheat and your orchards for trees and you, know, you name it. You're all up there. You can produce an awful lot where you don't have to use insecticide to get to, to keep the bug population down. You can you can use, you know, real life things and then and, and actually go out, walk around a little vacuum cleaner and whoop, where'd that bug come from? Whoop, and it's gone. Not that you're going to have a lot of bugs flying from the planet up to, you know, 300, 400 miles up in space, but yeah, you got a market.